Engineer 775 with just a little follow up to the last video I did about uh, getting ready for the job. And uh, this is a great little building. Put the uh, Carolina water tank, 1,050 gallon tank in here, and started to do some plumbing. Uh, I've got to get a trencher today, but some of the hand digging's already been done. And so what we're doing is uh, we like to put a drain. That's what that will be, a drain, so you can flush the tank out occasionally. We don't need to do that much, but it's nice to have that feature. I'm uh, getting ready to set my bladder tank, and I've stubbed up uh, the line that will be used to pull the water off for the booster pump, which you saw in a previous video. I'm going to start wiring this up, and some of you have asked about seeing some of this more step by step so for some of you this will be boring and some of the, for some of you this will be educational I guess so again what I'm using is the Dankoff 24 volt flow light booster pump and pre-filtering a lot of people ask about why am why are these filters uh, horizontal well because I'm it's on the suction side so when this fills up with water you all the air will go to the top if there is any air and so you'll be pulling just water through here it, again most filtration is done on the um, the outlet side of a pump but Dankoff has a great um, great thing going and uh, these pumps last 15 20 years if uh, you pre-filter so it's just kind of their stipulation and it's uh, proven to be very effective and then uh, the little flex charge charge controller surge arrester yeah, I'll pull this box off here and show you. I got a lot of um, the wire from the solar is going to come up. I'm going to bring some conduit up into here, and then I'm going to go back out with some of the battery sensing wires. I've got the uh, batteries here, the 8A8Ds. Just show you those quickly. They're the DECA 8A8Ds, 245 amp hour batteries. I'm going to wire them in series to make it a 24 volt battery bank. But uh, this this will provide a lot of water. But I also tell people to make hay while the sun shines. And if you can, do a lot of your uh, work with this pump when the sun's out. Because the amperage of the solar panel that I'm putting in matches the amperage to pressurize this bladder tank. If that makes sense. I hope it does. And that way I'm not really taxing my batteries at all. Um, so, so, but if I need water at 2 in the morning, I, I've got it and I can do it. It'll just use battery energy to do that, stored energy to do that. But why not just, uh, you know, plan. Plan ahead as we do as preppers. So, alright, um, that's, that's the little building. It's going to be a bathroom shower, um, uh, just a, a wash house, I guess. There's a nice, nice structure. And the thermal mass of that tank should keep this uh, building uh, nice and warm or steady temperature. Could probably keep it from freezing. It'll be insulated, and so that's a cool, another cool benefit of putting the tank inside the building. It's just the thermal mass of a thousand gallons of water at probably uh, 50, 60, 55 degrees. It's probably going to be around 60 degrees after it's sitting here. So just picture that amount of mass keeps everything from freezing uh, just makes a nice little nice little building so uh, I'll show you some more of that I gotta do some trench in here from the building over to our solar site in the well and this is a four inch PVC cased well and we've just we've put in the solar submersible just drop that in and I'm using a simple pump cap and uh, we'll put the simple pump in later. So he'll have a hand pump back up. Again, this is another three pump system. And uh, set the pole out here. Um, it's about 7.30 and the, the sun is coming up. But we'll have a nice little solar window here down this long field. And uh, so we're getting ready. We set the pole yesterday. So it's ready and stout for the for the solar, which we're going to set on the pole here shortly. Um, I like bringing my trailer because that way I can assemble the solar right on it, and then we'll just pick it up and set it on 
sitting on the pole. So, and again, one of these panels is for the submersible pump, and the other panel will be for charging the batteries in the wash house. And that's pretty much it. Let me stop there. And that's kind of not every step by step, but that would bore you to death. So, um, I think that's that's it. I'll add a few things on to this and uh, hopefully that'll be helpful if you are interested in putting a system in whether you're going to do it yourself or you want to just contact me if you need some help engineer 775 till next time okay the next step is uh, typically trenching we trench over to the to the well and in this line you've got to have your float switches your uh, low water sensors and this line will have a another set of number six uh, two with six two with ground with uh, the UF direct berry and then we'll conduit up here so just kind of getting our wires in place to wire up the control box and uh, so trenches are in plumbing is pretty much done and uh, this one is a fairly short run, so that was great. We also put an overflow in just for flushing the tank out occasionally. Nice just to uh, show you that. See the down to a creek. You have a control box here. You can just open that up, open the valve up, and drain this entire tank. And in here, this... Uh, this wire and the electrical access is where we put a, a float switch. So the float switch will just, when the tank rises up, it'll it's just a mechanical switch and it shuts the, it'll shut the pump off and that rotates down and turns on, just goes clunk, clunk. And so I'm going to hook that together to this uh, instrumentation wire and it's buried. And then we're going to stub up for the battery charging circuit next. We'll test everything and look for leaks and, uh, Check everything electrically, make sure we're getting the right voltage, the right amperage on everything, record those numbers. And eventually, coming out of the end of this, our goal today or tomorrow will be uh, about six gallons a minute, 55 psi. Oh, I'm get my shadow out of there. All right, uh, all right just turn the pump on, just flushing, flushing out the pump, and just turn the solar on. Doing great. Let's put some water in the tank. Okay, here's one of the final steps. I've got everything wired. See the multiple colors here for the charge controller. Surge arresters tied in, pumps fused, batteries are wired and fused. Got everything fused appropriately. The batteries are wired together in series to 24 volts. System's full of water. Uh, we filled this in a few hours, the thousand, thousand and fifty filled that. That was nice to have that filled so we could do our booster testing. And what's nice because of the elevation of the tank, that if you can see that when the tank is well, even three quarters full, that the Dankoff booster will do absolutely no suction lift, which makes it real easy on the pump, easy on the batteries. So the only thing the pump's doing is pressurizing the tank and and that's it so we're uh, nice to do, be able to do this off of solar let me just turn this on here shoot the water about 30 feet up in the up in the trees all that's from the Dankoff flow light booster pump hard to beat definitely gonna be able to take a shower in that So, anyway, that's all set up, ready to go, and that's it. So, I know some of you wanted to see, a lot of my junctions are done in here. I have uh, the power coming in from the solar panel into here, connected to surge arrestor line, connected to the power input for the charge controller here on the white wire. This is the positive. The red goes to the battery. That's tied in with this, and then I have these two sensing wires that are 
sensing and the condition of the battery bank so it knows when to charge when to back off and that's it so the goal is to keep these batteries nice and full short cycled and that's uh, that's it for now I'm gonna go ahead and put a simple pump in so we have uh, three pumps in the system guaranteed to have water okay just to summarize and cap off this installation uh, we have uh, two 290 watt panels one is a battery charging uh, power source and the other is a submersible well pumps power source and I tie everything together in here with a controller breaker box the system is bonded and grounded to earth ground and then we've just kind of finished everything up a four inch well with a simple pump and uh, we're gonna let me just show you here and just show you how this thing pumps all right sorry for the a typical shaky video as you can kind of see plenty of plenty of water just hand pumping at least five gallons a minute and that's the beauty of the simple pump we can also directly connect this to the bladder tank that is over in the building and pressurize that for showers and to run a portable uh, propane shower unit and uh, take you over here that also can backfill and feed the line that we put in to uh, fill that green tank which we are the solar pumps filling right now take a, take a peek in here let's see We've got a weight and pressure switch it's just about going level so I got about six more inches and then that'll kick off again I'll probably adjust that adjust that up here but we got we'll have a thousand gallons of water in here shortly about 900 right now and then the got two of the battery boxes um, 888Ds charging they're at 26.4 volts so that tells me the little charge controller is working like it's supposed to even on a cloudy day and the bladder tanks ready so so gonna be a great little outbuilding for uh, showers laundry just uh, sanitation washing up and we put in some a drain line that will also have a washer machine possible drain line uh, toilet and for septic and all that so it's a lot going on in this little building and the other cool thing is that this uh, tank will be a nice thermal mass to keep this building once it's insulated at a steady temperature all right wrapping up engineer 775 signing off